All right, and now when I open up Task Manager, boom, nerds, 103 processes. Not 200, not 300, 800 processes or whatever you had, 103 processes. And I'm gonna show you how to do it too, right after this. Nico knows tech, all your tech tips and reviews on deck. Nico knows tech, number one channel with the news on check. All right, let's go ahead and get started. I've been meaning to cover this tool for the longest time and a lot of you guys in the comments have been telling me, make a video about the Chris Titus tool and I just haven't gotten around to it, but it's happening today. I use this tool all the time. This is, I'm gonna show you how everything works. It's extremely powerful, very user friendly. Some of it's a little bit advanced, but I'm gonna guide you the whole way. It's here at ChrisTitus.com. You can actually go to the link in the description and it's made by this guy. He's actually a YouTuber as well. Really cool channel, I'm a subscriber. Um, he's amazing, definitely check him out. He's actually pretty successful too. A lot of people love what he does and he made and maintains this tool. So to go ahead and get started, we're gonna reduce system load. We're gonna de-bloat windows in a controlled way and I'm gonna show you how. So you'll go to this website and then you'll go ahead and copy right here to copy this code here. And the way we're gonna do this, this is a PowerShell command. So we're going to right click on start and then open up Windows PowerShell Admin. If you're on Windows 11, it'll probably say Terminal Admin, but either way, it's the same thing. You can also search Terminal, or um, in my case, it's going to be PowerShell, and I'm gonna run it as Administrator. Either way, we're just running PowerShell as Admin, and then since we already have that command copied, we can just right click, and then paste it, and then hit Enter. And this is going to download a graphic user interface uh, for us to interact with the tool. So it's really simple. It kind of looks really cool. If you use this in front of your friends, you're gonna look like a hacker or someone who really knows computers. So it's kind of got that cool factor because you're gonna see PowerShell stuff going on. I'm gonna go ahead and make this a little smaller. And we have these four sections here, install, tweaks, config, updates, and micro win. I'll tell you briefly about what everything does. The first tab here, let's assume you have a new computer and you have nothing installed on it. You don't have Chrome, Adobe Reader, or any of the stuff you need. You did a fresh install of Windows. This is a good tool to use on a new install because new installs are really bloated. They have nothing on them and you have to go to a website and download the executable and click the, are you sure? Are you sure you don't want to buy this? It's just, a, it's just a pain in the rear end. You can actually go through all the browsers and just select Chrome and then all the different sections here. On a new machine, you might put Adobe Acrobat Reader, and then Microsoft Tools, you might put Visual C, and then VLC, I always put VLC Media Player. On Pro Tools, I might install some of this. Utility 7-Zip, um, all this kind of cool stuff you can put on MSI Afterburner, and then under the uh, the games, you can install Steam, Epic Games, just install everything without downloading packages for everything. But I'm not gonna do that right now, but after you select everything you want, click Install Upgrade Selected, and then you'll see everything being installed through the command line, through the, through the PowerShell, and it's just so easy and so fast. Now, what we're gonna do to reduce our system load is we're gonna go straight to Tweaks. Now, here on Essential Tweaks, these are all which are known to be safe. They're not going to break anything. Um, advanced tweaks, these may change the way Windows works, so you wanna use caution, and these are a deliberate decision you wanna consider. We're gonna do some today, and I'm gonna tell you why they're all right. So the first thing that I do is I create a restore point. Why? Because what if I don't like the way this script ran? Because we're running scripts on our machine. What if it changes windows and I want it to go back to where before I started? Maybe I clicked the wrong thing. So creating a restore point is very important. And let's assume you don't like the way things worked out. Just search system restore to create a restore point and then click system restore. Now make sure that your C drive primarily has protection on. If it doesn't, then you need to configure it and turn it on. That way you can go back in time on your computer. Everybody should have a uh, system restore on. Anyway, next thing we're gonna go is we're gonna go ahead and delete temp files. This is common sense, it's gonna free up some space. It doesn't delete anything that you want. It's just junk that's gonna be deleted eventually, but deleting it right now. Disable consumer features. This is third party apps and stuff trying to sell to you through the start menu. Definitely a yes. Telemetry, this is Windows spying on you. We're gonna upgrade your security and your privacy a lot. 
activity history, and then game DVR is up to you. If you use the built-in Windows game DVR, then leave it, but I'm gonna turn it off for me. Hibernation, this is a Windows desktop, so I don't use hibernation. I'm gonna disable that. Home group doesn't work right, we're gonna disable that. It's not gonna prevent you from being able to access your printers. It's just you're not dealing with that stupid uh, a home group. I'm going to disable location tracking because I'm not using a laptop and I don't use find my uh, laptop features on this. If you have a laptop, maybe consider leaving that if you use a service that uses location tracking. Storage sense and Wi-Fi sense, they're no good. I'm going to disable them. And then down here, I'm going to disable recall because I don't use recall. If you use it, it's okay. Don't check it if you use recall. But here's the most important one. Set services to manual. Now, if we go into services, I get it to open, services, and we open this, by default, you're gonna have a lot of stuff running in the background. And a lot of this stuff you may think should be disabled. It's actually not good practice to disable services unless you really know what you're doing, because you're gonna make something not work right, most likely. But a lot of them are set to automatic or delayed start. So a lot of things of Windows, even if you don't use them, are automatically running when you start Windows. They can be set to manual, meaning they're not running by default. But if you activate something or access something in Windows that uses that service, if it's on manual, it'll still work. It'll turn it on as needed. But if it's not needed, it's turned off. That's a better way of of configuring windows. So setting service to manual is a big part of what's gonna reduce system load. And this is not gonna make something not work right. This is every, you're not even gonna notice uh, the service is set to manual, except your system's gonna be a little snappier and more responsive. Debloat edge, this does not remove edge, it just debloats it, makes it a little bit lighter. Doesn't make it stop working, it's perfectly good. Now to the advanced tweaks. Careful going here. I'm going to show you some ones that are perfectly safe and don't cause any weird activity. But if you're going to do something outside, it might have pros and cons. It depends on your situation. But I'm going to go ahead. I'm not going to do Adobe Network Block unless I don't use Adobe products. I do use Adobe products, but I'm going to do an Adobe Debloat. I mean, it's going to reduce some of the needless services in the background, but all my Adobe products will work just fine. All right, I'm gonna disable Toretto. This can sometimes cause latency, especially in multiplayer gaming. Disable background apps. By default, all the applications, or most of the applications on your system, especially Windows apps, are running all the time in the background. They don't need to run in the background unless you're opening them. So disabling background apps is a good idea. Copilot, this is up to you. If you use Copilot, the built-in Microsoft AI, then go ahead and leave this unchecked. I don't use it, so I'm disabling it. And then I don't recommend doing the Intel stuff. And then the, the next thing I do is, is I look at remove all MS Store apps. Don't do this if it's not a new install, because a lot of you guys have clicked this on similar bloats on other channels, and you've come to me like, how do I get my Minecraft worlds you know, back. If you click this and you have Minecraft and Minecraft worlds in your computer, they're gonna go poof. They will get deleted. So this is a good idea if you have a brand new install of Windows and you have lots of junk HP games and you just wanna delete all the Windows bloat to start your new fresh install, then fine. But if it's not a new install and you have things installed, especially maybe Windows games, Sea of Thieves, Minecraft, not recommended because it can make, a, it can make problems. We're not gonna remove Edge because, in my opinion, it makes Windows less stable because Edge is a part of Windows. Can we remove it? Yes, but you can come into problems such as Windows Update, trying to update Edge and failing to do Windows updates because you removed a component. It, it can cause issues. Other ITs disagree with me. Most of them agree with me, but if you're asking my opinion, leave Edge alone. All right. And if you're not using OneDrive, this is amazing. Because if you're using OneDrive, don't do this. But if you don't want OneDrive and you don't want that hassle, click Remove OneDrive. If you have files there, it's gonna put it into a folder on your desktop so you don't lose anything. But it makes it to where all your stuff's on your own computer and not on the cloud. If you're never gonna use any Razer software, this is a good one. Because a lot of people like to use a Razer mouse but don't automatically like that the mouse automatically makes Razer software install. You can block it here. 
All right, then over to the right, you can activate dark mode and you can tweak some things here. What I like to do is disable sticky keys because I don't use it and I activate dark theme. The rest of the stuff, I leave. Then over here, if you have a high performance Windows computer, like a gaming rig with good cooling and everything, you can add and activate the ultimate performance power pl uh, profile. So if we go over to power, plan, and choose a power plan, you'll see that I have ultimate performance. Like a lot of gaming PCs will have this. Well, you might only have high performance power saver and balanced. I have the ultimate performance plan. If you click this, you'll get the ultimate power plan, just like I do. All right, now that I've done selecting everything here, I'm gonna go ahead and run tweaks. And then over here, it's starting to run the script. And this might take a little while, may take like five minutes or less, and then it'll be done and we can go to the next step. While that's running, here's a quick word from our sponsor, Aura. A few months ago, some hackers tried to dox me, but fortunately, I already had Aura, who sponsored this video. Aura is the all-in-one cybersecurity service that allows you to quickly and easily remove your information from online data brokers. Private information such as your address, phone number, relatives, and more are all for sale by online data brokers. Aura enables you to opt out of all these rackets with the click of a button. Aura also includes a strong antivirus, VPN, credit monitoring, and a million dollars of identity theft insurance. Use the link aura.com forward slash Nico to get a two week free trial today. And then you'll see all of the commands that have run on the side here. Looks really cool. You'll look really smart in front of your friends running these commands. So that's kind of a bonus. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to come back to the main window and we're going to click this button down here to run ONO Shut Up 10. This is a really cool privacy management application which you can actually download or you can just run it through this tool. And what I like to do is I like to go here to local machine and then I go up to the top like there's literally everything you can do with recommendations here. You can control um, all the different privacy features. Now, if you don't know what they are, it's okay. Here's what I always do. I go to actions and I apply only recommended settings. There's also recommended and somewhat recommended settings and apply all settings. If you do these, yes, you're more private, but at the cost of some things not working anymore. So for example, your date and time might not automatically be updated uh, because it can't communicate out to the internet. Um, so there's certain features. This is kind of play around with it if you want, but this up here, make sure that it's a lot more private. Things are not able to just talk out in the background. Your calculator can't communicate to Microsoft all the time and use your bandwidth, but nothing stops working. It doesn't break anything. So we'll just click this right up here. And then it asks you if you wanna create a system restore point. Since we already created one earlier, we don't have to, so we can just click no. And then nine uh, settings have been, uh, 19 settings have been changed. Then all I have to do is close here, click OK. And that will take effect next restart. OK, now we're done in the tweak section. We're going to go to config. And then if you need all .NET framework, I don't recommend it. Just get like 6.0 and later on your own if you need it for a particular game. But you have all of these that you can enable. So if you want the sandbox, Hyper-V, you can install these figures. I'm not gonna do that today, but what I am gonna do is go over here to updates. If you want to activate certain old school commands here, old school features, uh, such as the original power panel, um, the old control panel, you can just click that here and it opens control panel, for example. Really nice tool, God mode, this opens up. I think I did a video on activating God mode. But anyway, you have all these features here. I'm not doing any of these today, but you can also do the system uh, corruption scan. This is SFC from the command line. Uh, you can remove Adobe uh, Creative Cloud. You can reset your network. This is a network reset if you couldn't get your Wi-Fi to work right. Reset Windows Update. This is cool to do if your Windows updates keep failing. This might, might possibly uh, fix it. But you can play in here. Really cool stuff you can do. And then right here, we're gonna go to Updates. This is your default settings. Basically means whenever Windows wants to push out an update, you're gonna get it, uh, even if it's not ready. Security settings, this is the recommended. This is going to enable you to defer updates. You can actually delay certain feature updates. Um, for example, when every six months when Microsoft uh, releases a new feature update or a facelift, so they're oftentimes buggy and it takes a while for Windows to get their act together. 
and you can actually hold off until they fix things and then choose to update very good idea security settings you're still going to get all the patches you're not going to be outdated and vulnerable with this one and the last thing in this tool is micro win you can create your own scaled down windows 11 iso you can tell it to not have certain things or to have extra things you can make a very lightweight windows install disk which is really really cool all right now that we're done here if you don't have anything else to do or no installs to do we can just close this and close this and then we're done with that part of the tool next we're going to go into services so type services in here and then run as admin actually we just open it you don't need to run as administrator and make sure you're you're labeling these by name so it's an alphabetical you want to look for the background intelligent transfer service or the bit service we're going to right click and properties what this is this is this sounds cool this is how windows optimizes and speeds up your windows updates that's what they say it does this is literally making you part of a peer-to-peer -peer network run by microsoft so that whenever you download a windows update you're going to share that windows update with other random windows users on the internet using your bandwidth to provide windows updates to others that's because microsoft is saving bandwidth by letting you do it for them you do not have to opt into this so you can go ahead and set this to manual or disabled i'm going to go ahead and hit disabled if it's running go ahead and click stop apply done big time now we're going to go down to the bottom to sys main this used to be called superfetch sys main is constantly building a record or index of the normal applications you you use to try and make windows faster that sounds cool but it doesn't work right this actually can slow down your system over time right click here properties let's change it to disabled stop apply okay you probably just reduce if you had a 100 percent disk usage issue in in a process and a task manager you might have just fixed it you're welcome all right now we're done with services last thing this one a lot of you guys know i saved it for last is you'll right click on task on taskbar and open up the task manager and then go over to startup now you want to go down here and disable anything that doesn't need to run all the time and what is the only things that need to run are things that you use all the time like for example i use nvidia broadcast every day eset is my antivirus i'm using on this machine realtech is my speakers my audio so i don't need this one for example this is part of adobe i don't need it running all the time spotify doesn't need to run xbox doesn't need to run all the time teams steam ea um, gog galaxy edge all of these don't need to run all the time so if there's something that doesn't need to run all the time right click and disable it but if it belongs to a device you use like this is an audio device or your antivirus or something you like running all the time then leave it enabled but disabling steam or discord for example doesn't stop me from using discord if i open up discord then it's opened if i'm not using discord it's not using up my system resources once you're done with that close here restart your computer all right and now when i open up task manager boom nerds 103 processes not 200 not 300 800 processes or whatever you had 103 processes